If you've ever watched pundits on the far right like Ben Shapiro or Steven Crowder, you'll understand quite quickly that such people aren't here to have an honest conversation. Instead, they employ dishonest practices such as cherry-picking studies when it comes to climate change, or spewing so many falsities that their opponent can't take the proper time to debunk them. While I won't be talking about such practices in this video, I'm instead going to focus on a simpler one. It is the claim that everyone they don't agree with is ugly. Sometimes right-wingers will say this as if it were a meaningful point about what they were discussing. This is the case in Paul Joseph Watson's video titled Why Are Feminists Fat and Ugly? He makes the same claim most anti-feminists do by saying feminists are ugly, supporting this claim by cherry-picking pictures from the internet, and then saying feminism destroys women. This kind of playground insult isn't new, and has been used against suffragettes in cartoons and similar media back in the day. This is all pretty ironic considering Paul Joseph Watson believes that conservatism is the new counterculture or the new punk rock. Now, I don't know about you, but making the same kinds of insults someone's grandpa could have made doesn't sound all that rebellious or fitting of a counterculture. And that's the thing. All the right wing is doing with this feminists are ugly insult is perpetuating a pattern in history. One that they try to cover up by saying they would have supported first and second wave feminism, but just not third wave feminism because women already have enough rights. It's not different from the bullshit you hear when someone says they would have supported Martin Luther King Jr., but not Bernie Sanders, a man who got his politics from Dr. King, because blacks already have enough rights. On the topic of race, that is another target for this insult. As America has done in the past with the Irish, Japanese, and of course blacks, ugly cartoons have now seemed to target new groups of people such as Jews and Middle Easterners. As I said before, all this is really doing is perpetuating a trend that has been occurring for many decades, and isn't as easily called out because these events are still unfolding. As they say, hindsight is 2020. When they aren't trying to paint racial minorities or women as ugly, they usually do it to their opponents notably by using the same overused pictures from the internet, such as the red-haired feminist or the did-you-assume-my-gender person. By the way, this is how you can tell bigots don't actually spend time with transgender people, because they don't say that. Honestly, it's kind of sad that some of these people are such shut-ins that the only trans people they've seen are ones from the internet. A possible reason the far right uses such a childish insult might be due to the obsession they have with their image. An aesthetic narcissism, if you will. Nazis don't dress up in button-up shirts because it's a dress code. It's because it can make them look better, sometimes even more civil, when compared to protesters who wear black hoodies and masks. The far right knows to do this, because when they deviate from this tactic and dress up in diapers to protest safe spaces, it doesn't actually help their cause, but instead gives me another reason to make fun of Charlie Kirk. Basically put, unpalatable far-right politics are more easily digested when dressed in a delectable suit and this tactic seems to work pretty universally for the far right. For instance, when he's not yelling at literal piles of horse shit, Alex Jones looks pretty reasonable because he has a fancy set, Rolex, and a suit paid for by the bullshit he sells on his website. Outside of rallies and gatherings, right-wingers will still try to push this narrative with videos like Paul Joseph Watson's called Sexy Hot Conservatives, because it's important to push, as much as they can, that they're the cool kids, that they're hip and counterculture. But this is an illusion, and just like people who call themselves classical liberals and centrists, you're not always what you call yourself. What such a playground insult boils down to is this. Propping up the image of people similar to you, white, straight, right-wing, etc, etc, while simultaneously uglifying those you don't like in the media. Usually women, usually racial minorities, usually political enemies. Of course, it should be said that this isn't a legitimate tactic, but instead, an example of one of the things that the far right does because they don't take political discourse seriously by design of their argumentative style. 